Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Six Figure Certified Coach. It's Katie DePaula here, founder of IGC. And I'm so excited. Today I'm interviewing my friend, my colleague, IGC graduate, certified coach, Roselle Caballas. Roselle, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me here. You guys, she's so nervous. She's like freaking (laughs) out. So we're just going to out that. I'm like, I'm not going to grill you. It's going to be fine. So um, thank you so much for being with me here. You are such an incredible leader in the marketing space. And I always love talking to you. We were just on our Leaders Rising retreat and Roselle, Roselle was like coaching me as we were like walking to lunch one day. So she really brings it. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to have this conversation today. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so I guess I'll give a little bit of, of a bio and then you can fill in the blanks. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So like I said, Roselle is a certified coach through IGC coaching school. She has a bachelor's in psychology and communications. I'm sure we'll talk about how that informs the work that she does. She's a 2020 graduate of our coach training and also a graduate of leaders rising. Are you graduated? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you graduated from leaders rising in what year? Last year, 2021, 2021. Okay, cool. She has an ACC credential with the ICF, the international coach federation for those of you who don't know. So we'll talk a little bit about credentialing and what that means. And she believes that life feels more purposeful when you give yourself permission to create whatever your heart and soul desire. I love that. Mm -hmm. So your, your niche is marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Tell us a little (laughs) bit about that. Yeah. So as a marketing coach, um, wait, do you just want to hear like why I chose it or like what it means? Both, both. I want to hear all of it. Yeah. So before I joined, um, IGC for my coaching certification, I actually started my own like social media business and I was serving a lot of like online businesses at that time and many of my clients were coaches I thought the work that they were doing was so cool Mm. Um, I was helping them like market different programs even podcasts I was even doing that and years prior when I was trying to figure out what I was doing with my psychology degree I had googled um, you know what can you do with a psychology degree besides becoming a therapist and I found life coach and I thought that was so cool, but I was only about like 19 at that time. So I thought to myself, you know, you must have to know a lot about life in order to do that. And then flash forward, I'm working with these coaches and I realized like, you know, they're doing such impactful creative work that really helps people and they're normal people. Like they're just normal people doing cool work. And I was really unfulfilled at my like corporate job at the time. And I wanted like a change. So I started Googling, how do you become a life coach? I found the International Coaching Federation that led me to Inner Glow Circle. Mm. I joined the coaching program. At first, I started as, you know, just a general life coach. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that a lot of people were really still interested in what I was doing with marketing Mm. um, because of my prior business. And so it was kind of confusing for me to like manage both of those things, like the the social media stuff and becoming a life coach at the same time. So I thought to myself, why don't I find a way to combine both? So Mm -hmm. like in my own practice, I help other coaches with their own marketing, but then as a life coach, I get to help them too around like the mindset and the blocks and the resistances that come up when it comes to like, you know, getting visible or making sales or overthinking social media and your content and all of that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love how you merged it together. I love how you used your natural gifts and skills and, and let's take a step back a little bit. So you started like vlogging and blogging and, and all that. When, how old were you year? Yeah. I think that was 2018. It might've been 21 or 22 at the time. Okay. Um, yeah. 
that's when my whole visibility journey like really began. Okay. So you've always had this interest in psychology. I know you've had your own journey with mental health and things like that. And you're quite open about that, which I, I love and respect so much. Um, you started playing with social media and, and vlogging and blogging, and I'm sure started to see like the connections between psychology and marketing and the social media space. Right. So tell us a little bit about that, how things started to interconnect for you. Yeah. So I was about to graduate and I realized like I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I literally hated the job that I was in. I was about to flunk my last semester and I tried starting like a little e-com business and that failed. But it taught me a lot because at the time I realized like I didn't have a lot of money to, you know, run ads and I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't want to waste money on ads in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I actually played with social media and I grew a Pinterest account to like 13,000 followers in um, like, I think three or four months. And then I saw my sales increase by like 23%. And that gave me a lot of confidence in social media. That's when I started to realize like, oh, I'm really good at this, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't figure out like how to find some purpose and fulfillment out of that. Cause I was Mm -hmm. just doing it to make sales. Right. At the, At the same time, I was going through my own journey of like, um, like mental health. Like I really struggled with like anxiety and depression and, and anger and all these different things. Um, and I read this book that really changed my like life. It was about the emotional, like gifts that come from emotional sensitivity and and intensity. Mm -hmm. When I finally realized that my strong emotions were like a superpower, Mm. I really, really wanted to share that like with the world and I was in such a dark place at the time. So I started like my own blog. I started talking about it on YouTube. I started sharing like my story on Quora as well. And that was a very terrifying experience. It was very vulnerable. I I had never like put myself out there like that. Mm -hmm. And then one day, like I had a video that got reshared from like some other big website and I was getting like thousands of views on a YouTube like video, like literally overnight. And then I had like different posts that were getting reshared and reshared and commented Mm -hmm. on Quora. My inbox started flooding with people saying like, hey, I saw your video. Like I read your post. This really changed my life. I never knew that that, you know there are people out there like me. I never, I always thought I was a problem. And that was the moment that changed my entire life where I realized like all the darkness and all the battles that I've been through, the story and the message existed so that I could help and share it with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized like the power of social media and content beyond just making money. And I wanted to share that like with other people. Yeah. Wow. I love that. It's so powerful, like beyond making money and also beyond like, you know, just like being seen, not that there's anything wrong with being seen, but I think we live in this like very influencer culture now where like people show off their clothes and their handbags and their homes and their cars and whether or not they like really own these things or they're rented or borrowed, we don't know. Right. But you know, for you, it was about like getting information out there to people. And like, I, 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 somebody said this at our, at our retreat, maybe you like remember exactly how it was said, but it was, I think Charisma said it. And she was basically like, she was talking about live and she was acknowledging live at dinner. And she said something to the extent of like, live is so vulnerable. And she's like, when we put on masks, and we refuse to take them off, then like the result is everyone around us just feels alone. Like they feel like Mm. they're the only one. And it's like, you decided to, to like, so bravely take your mask off guys. This is not a COVID reference. Okay. This is a figurative mask. Um, but you decided so bravely to take your, your mask off and, you know, let the walls fall down and, and show the world who you were, who you are. And that was like a really, really generous thing for you to do. And it was probably something that you needed as well. But like, it sounds like you saw like, this isn't just about me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. I really believe in that. Like, I I realized that all the fears that I had about putting myself out there were about like myself, but there was a greater purpose in the story that I shared that was for everyone else. And that kind of like fulfillment is what makes me just really excited about sharing stuff online and sharing like my thoughts and ideas and helping other people too find the confidence to do the same. Yeah. So how do you know, like in your body, like if something is worth sharing or if something is meant to be shared versus if it's meant to be private or kind of insignificant or like, how do you, do you have any radar, like internal systems that you use? Because I feel like all the time people struggle with what to share and how much to share. And then there's like the aspect of like sharing things about other people in our lives and our relationships and how that impacts them. Right. Like if I share stories about my husband that like, I think are funny and relatable, like, I mean, he's like actually accepted it, but just as an example, if he wasn't down with it, you know, that impacts him or people sharing maybe dynamics with their parents or, you know, how do you decide what to share? Yeah, that's a great question. So honestly, I really just ask myself, like, what does this mean for others? Mm -hmm. And then I also ask myself, like, is this loving? Is this true? Is it helpful? And those those are my questions that really help me, um, you know, feel confident about what I'm sharing, feel good about it and, and just check in like, what place it's coming from like is it coming from an empowered place that is meant to serve others or shift perspectives or is it coming from you know a a lower place that is unprocessed and still needs to be figured out etc (laughs) etc that's a great way to end your sentence (laughs) um okay well I love that so much thank you for sharing so openly. So, um, you know, for those people who are listening, a lot of people that listen to our podcast are also like thinking about going through coach training or they're in coach training or whatever. So you're also a student trainer with IGC, you're a lead coach trainer and you do open coaching calls in the circle, right? So like, there's a lot of ways for people to plug in and work with you. They can work with you one-on-one through IGC. You have your own practice, right? So you're a busy lady. Yes. And I work at nine to five. And you work a nine to five, right? <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit more about the main mission and focus of your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my main mission and focus, I think it's there's a, a deeper layer behind all of it. Is, mm-hmm. And it's that I want women to feel like they can create really anything that they want in this life and that they're like worthy and wealthy of it. Mm-hmm. Um it just so happens to be that marketing is like the skill that I have and I have a lot of like knowledge and tools around, Mm -hmm. but the, but the coaching and then helping people get their coaching and their services and their stories out into the world. It's like a ripple effect. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I think through my work, I'm able to help people help more people because I know how much coaching and different healing modalities and different perspectives and different teachings have changed my life that honestly, like if I, you know, could look back at my life and and say that I even helped like 250 people like on their journey to sharing their gifts with the world, like that's really all I want to do. Why 250 in person? I I don't know. I just made that up right now. (laughs) Well, it's funny that you say that because like, you know, when people are always like, if I like help one person through this. Like, I feel like celebrities like always say stuff like that. They're always like, if I help one person and it's like, you're a celebrity, I hope you're helping more than one person. But the reason I bring this up is because I I think that when we decide to use our lives in a purposeful way, like we do want to impact people. And -hmm. like, that's usually like plural people. Like we want to impact as many people as possible. We want to inspire them. We want to help them. We want to change lives that change other lives. That's like a value at IGC. Right. And coaching does that. Like it's a beautiful way to make a contribution that has a domino effect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously this podcast is called six figure certified coach. Mm -hmm. And as a marketing coach, I'd love to talk to you a little bit 
Um, we've talked about this before, but I'd love to hear you share from your perspective, what, what's like the marketing formula? No, you can tell me there's no formula. This is just like how I'm formulating the question. Okay. What's the formula from a marketing perspective for a six figure business? Yeah. So from what I've seen, I believe that there are a few things that are super important and that differentiate, you know, six figure coaching businesses from non six figure coaching business. Okay. I think, I think one of the things is really differentiating, differentiating yourself, like, and owning what makes you unique in your okay. business. Okay. And this kind of affects the other things too, which I believe affect, um, kind of help, which when people really own what makes them unique and differentiate themselves, mm-hmm. it does a couple of things. Like when they stand out more, obviously, but then also they begin to create like a really deep community around their business that is larger than just like the offer that they have, yeah. right? It, it becomes almost like a movement. And so you need those relationships and that community and for yourself to stand out as well, mm-hmm. but then also the movement behind the mission behind what, what you do. And I think like in a glow circle is one of the best examples that I know personally mm-hmm. of that, right? Like inner glow circle is not just a coaching company, but a coach training company, but there's a larger mission that is very clear behind what um, IGC does. And that's why, and it has such a strong community with that as well, that people just keep coming back and staying. Well, I think like what I, I agree with you. And I think what I would also also add on is like, the other benefit of community is that it creates, um, like a, it, it helps support a referral based business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're a company that does various types of marketing and advertising, but we've always been driven by referrals and it's like, you know, people have great experiences. They feel that they're part of a community and people inside of the community tend to have shared values, right? Like people are their own people. They're not necessarily like-minded. They might have different perspectives on life and the world, but in general, they have a similar value system, which allows them to work together. And so I agree with you. I think that like community is a huge part and community also really helps build referral-based businesses so that we don't have to like exhaust ourselves, you know, marketing and advertising and selling all the time. Liv and I always say like the best marketing is being a really great coach, right? So if you're really great at what you do, that's obviously going to help fuel your six-figure business from the start. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. Like, um, that's a part that I think a lot of people overlook, like it's not direct marketing, but being really good at what you do and actually showing your, your clients that you care about them. And even people who aren't, you know, paying clients yet, treating them like mm-hmm. clients, that is such a, a big part of, you know, the success that you create. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So you also mentioned like messaging and I Mm -hmm. feel like this ties to, you would say like differentiating yourself from other people. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Like, how do you differentiate yourself from other people? What are some examples of that? Yeah. So there's a lot of ways to go about it. Like obviously technical marketing is being really clear about, you know, the specific problems and transformations that you create. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, it goes a lot deeper than that, Mm -hmm. which is like number one, Mm -hmm. owning your voice and talking the way you talk. And number um, two is owning your unique gifts as a coach. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people first get into this industry and, you know, they create offers or talk about things in certain ways because they think that's what's going to work to make them successful. Mm -hmm. But then as time goes on, they discover that everyone essentially kind of has like their secret sauce 
what makes them special and stand out. Like Mm -hmm. for me, what that looks like for me is I really try to bring in all the pieces of my life. Like the fact that I like to travel or the fact that I, you know, like to go to music festivals, Mm -hmm. that my health and well-being will always come first. And that is something that I, you know, bring into my coaching practice, that this isn't just about corporate marketing things but it's about how you your relationship with yourself those are the things that make my practice unique and the more I've been honest and authentic and transparent in those things the more like people gravitate towards me that's what I mean by differentiating yourself do you feel I'm gonna put you on the spot here do you feel like when you found IGC and you like looked at our marketing and you like saw you know, us sharing our stories. Like, do you feel like you connected to that? Because like, I feel like we, we do a lot of what you're talking about. Was that part of what attracted you? Yeah, absolutely. It was like the website and the videos and, and there was the, uh, what, what type of coach are you quiz? Mm-hmm. It all stood out to me. It was so different than anything I saw on other like coaching school websites. Mm -hmm. And I could do not, I took that quiz maybe like three times. I would go back to the (laughs) website and read everything. Cause I was like, am I, am I really going to do this? But I couldn't stop looking at it. And I knew that that was something I had to explore. That's an example. Like we've got Mm -hmm. an example right here of like, Liv and I have always tried to be ourselves in the business. It doesn't mean we're the exact same person. It's like the vulnerability and the authenticity and like telling, telling the truth, which my truth is going to be different than your truth. It's going to be different from whoever's truth, but it's like, oh, I want to be around people who are figuring out how to do business by being themselves. I want to be around people who don't have to like you know, dress totally different or talk totally different. Like people used to criticize me and say, like, I sound like a Valley girl. And I I still do kind of, if that's how, what you want to call it. But so do a lot of our, like, you know, so do people that I know that, that I've hired or so do students of ours or like, whatever it is, you know, it's important for us to find people that not, not, that aren't necessarily just like us, but are, are operating in a way that, helps us say, you know, I want to do that too. Like for me, I'm at a place in my life where I am looking to women who are juggling being a wife, being a mother, having a business. Like I might not do it exactly like them. I might not look like them. Like we might not, you know, but there are these qualities that I'm looking for. And, you know, I see that, like, I, I I see like, that's sort of what drew you to, to IGC amongst other things. And that's like what draws your clients to you as well. Like there's something in you, there's something about you that they're like, gosh, Roselle has this thing where like she markets from her soul and I want to learn how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the the coolest things about marketing specifically for coaches, Mm -hmm. because I, um, I served like just general like online service entrepreneurs at first. Okay. But the cool cool thing about marketing for coaches is it's really about like showing that or basically exhibiting that like this is what's possible and you you show that by showing you. Yeah. Because people are looking to you as you know I guess it's like a stepping stone to them un- unlocking like a version of themselves that they right. see within you. Yeah. Right. Right. And they see it, they see a glimpse of it inside of themselves, but it's like, how do I create that? And that's why when we first start coach training, we like do the ROI plan. Like we sit down and we say like, who do you want to be six months from now when you finish this course? What does that person look like? How do they carry themselves? Like how much money's in their bank account? Like get detailed to envision that future version of yourself. And when most people to start coach training, they haven't done an exercise like that before. Whereas like for you and I, like now we do that stuff all the time, right? Like we're mm-hmm. always like, you know, what is, Ke- who is Katie at the, this next level? Who's Katie at this next level? Okay. We got there. Who's Katie at this next level. Right. And, and same for you. So, um, I really love that. And I think it's so important to always be looking at who do we want to be? Who do we want our business to be in the world? And what are the the steps that we need to take to get there? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. So Rizal, another thing you talk about is creating content and business decisions from intuition and play. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah. So to create from your intuition, it's really interesting because some people in the content creators like space, just general content creators, they live life to create content. So like they'll go to Coachella that just happened recently so that they, exactly. Versus the shift in perspective is that you get to live your life and you get to share it. Does that make sense? Like you live your life. you, You live your life first and then you share it. And And when you like enter this space that you realize that like your marketing is really just an extension of you living your life, of you growing, of the things you've learned, of, you know, the stories that you've heard of the, the breakthrough that you got recently. Yeah. Then it it starts to like feed like your intuition. And these messages really come from like this higher place where I don't have like a 30 day content plan. I don't launch and like have a plan of what I'm going to talk about every day. I just know that I'm really excited to talk about something and I'm in like the message is going to come through me. And all I have to do is talk about it every day. And so with that being said, I treat my marketing like and my business like it's a playground. Like it's all just an experiment. It gets Mm -hmm. to be fun. If you decide that it gets to be fun, Mm -hmm. it gets to be like simple. If you decide that it gets to be simple. Yeah. And like efficiency comes into play too, you know, because it's like, it's more efficient to use, use your life to create content rather than to map your whole life out around the content you need to create. I mean, that just sounds so stressful to me, but I also can see how people do it and why people do it. And, um, you know, that pressure. And I think like something that I hear from new coaches a lot is like, they feel overwhelmed looking Mm -hmm. at social media, following, you know, a handful of coaches and, and one, of course they're comparing themselves, like just starting to someone who's like five years, 10 years in a lot of the time, which is always like a no, no, right. You can't compare to someone's like the, you know, the, the middle of their story to the beginning mm-hmm. of yours, but also it, it just takes off so much pressure to understand that this is something that you're going to learn how to weave into your life. Mm -hmm. It's not like a whole separate thing that you have to start doing. It's just like something that you start weaving in. It's a lens to think about your life through, you know, I, I got into coaching because for a lot of reasons, but like one of the reasons was that it was a lifestyle business and it allowed me to use my lifestyle as like a valuable thing, right? Like sharing my life had value as a life coach. Now there's still like, you know, decisions that you have to make around that. What do I share? What do I not share? What is truly private, right? Because I believe that we all need to have a private life, but, you know, I made a decision early on to be myself in my business. I feel that that's, you know, supported not only the growth of my business, but it's allowed me to be more free in my life overall. Like for me, I've always been someone who like, I'm I'm not good at being fake. I'm not good at like just doing something to do it. I'm a more intentional person. So, you know, intentionally choosing this career path and then saying like, this is a place where I get to be myself and I get to show people who I am. And like, it's a benefit, you know, it's not a bad thing. Like I've been in jobs where like, you don't want to show yourself and you just want to dress like everybody else. And you're just a cog in the wheel and you have to just fit in. And like, to your point, like this is a, a, a career path and in an industry and opportunity where like you get to stand out and you almost like half, half to a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, um, that reminded me, I think when I first started my mindset at the time, like as a coach, when I was creating content was like, okay, I'm a life coach now. Like, okay, I'm a marketing coach now. It's almost like I thought I had to put on this different identity in order to show up and like Mm. online and marketing, market myself. Like a uniform. 
Yeah, but it was more like mental, if that mm-hmm, makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that's like some people have that, like they need to kind of put on this alter ego to feel confident. But for me, it felt very inauthentic. And when I began to release that and and realize what you said, like this gets to weave into my own life. Mm -hmm. That's really when like the freedom came where, you know, things unrelated to marketing turned into a story because there's always a message Mm. in anything in life. Like I could talk about my yoga class and connect that to marketing and mindset somehow, or that I could just be on a walk and have an idea and I can just share it as I am. Like I didn't have to set up, you know, a camera yeah. and and everything. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with you. And I think that the other thing is like, as a business owner, it's not a nine to five thing. Like you don't actually get to shut it off. And for most of us, if, if we love what we do, we don't want to shut it off. Like we have ideas on the weekends. We want to write at night. Like we want to, you know, be fluid with how we work. And so you might be on vacation or traveling, let's say, and like it, it, you want to be sharing it. You want to be documenting it. You want to send out an email newsletter and be like, Hey everyone, I'm in LA right now. Like it's a vacation, but like, I'm emailing you because I want to show you my lifestyle and how this is all working together. And that's like the that's like the new way, right? Like mm-hmm. I think for most of us, like our parents or you, know, this isn't like something that has always been as possible, but with the internet, you truly can work from ever anywhere. And we're able to have these businesses that give us like so much freedom, sure in location, but also in how we show who we are and how we express ourselves. And like, my point is, you know, as a business owner, there is no nine to five. And so learning how to weave in your marketing and not be like working and then not working. It's not like living and working are these separate things. It's that this is like who you're, who you are in the world. This is you living your purpose. Mm -hmm. And you're always doing that, whether it's like quote unquote work hours or not. And your, your marketing can be a reflection and a symbol of that. Yeah, exactly. You said that so well. Oh, good thing we recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Well, thank you so much. This was so fun. It's so great spending time with you. You know, I just love you so much. Tell us where can we find you on the internet? If we want to hire you, mm-hmm. where can we locate you? Can we DM you? So if you want to connect with me, you can add me on Instagram at becoming Roselle. Um, you can send me a DM on there. I also have a lot of, you know, free live trainings that are all over my profile. I'm also on Facebook. You can look me up as well at Becoming Roselle. Or you can check out my website, roselcaballius.com. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. See you next week. 